And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that was referred to me by, you know, somebody that I hold in high regard. And I've been following you on LinkedIn for quite some time. You're so inspiring. And I'm so glad to have you on the show. Guys, y'all give it up for none other than the incomparable Jessica Fern Kirkland. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I hope I can live up to those expectations. Jeez. Oh, you, you're going to surpass them. I know this is probably going to be one of the best episodes ever. So no pressure. It's going to be amazing. Perfect. I love pressure. <laughs> good, good. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. I wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Thank you. Yeah, I am a industry veteran, been around for about 15 years, and most recently finished a, uh, a project as president of a management company. And I am now uh, looking for my next role, and the universe is kind of pushing me in a consulting capacity. So I do have a consulting practice. It is uh, propertymanagementintelligence.com and my business is Einstein Solutions. Uh, Albert Einstein and I have a lot of affinities, uh, especially around problem solving and critical thinking. So those who know me, uh, that's that's no surprise, but it's been really interesting after finishing this, uh, this journey at PMG as president, which I've never done before. You know, the, the opportunities and amazing conversations that I've had I, I'm really drawn to consulting, you know, because I can help so many organizations meet their objectives and problem solve. So I'm really open and fluid to what's next for me and want to let that happen organically. So that's that's where I'm at. That is fantastic. I love you. Your one journey leads you to another journey and it just continues to grow and get better along the way. We'll put your website on the show notes so people are interested right. in connecting with you. They just got to click on it and their instant connections. Pretty awesome. Congratulations awesome. on your new journey. I'm excited for you. Thank you. I'm excited too. That's awesome. Now, Jessica, I know you said uh, a lot of people call you JFK, so I may refer to you as JFK, JFK Jessica throughout. So just kind of give everyone a preface, you know, heads up just in case. But you've been such an inspiring leader and people have looked up to you for quite some time. And so I love to reach out to these inspiring leaders and take a peek behind the curtain and find out what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so Jessica, I reached out to you and asked, what inspires you? You sent me three incredible points and I wanna get to these right away. So the first one you shared, living authentically and with integrity. That's that's bold and you know, in, in today's world. So let us know, tell us what that means to you and how does that inspire you? Yeah, you know, I think authenticity is something that I've had to learn to embrace. You know, when you are starting out in a career or in an industry, which, you know, multifamily is one of the only industries where the amount of work, the input that you give is directly related to your output. Like I started as a leasing professional and just finished being president of a company. And I am just now finishing my degree. I actually got my grade on my capstone project back this morning and I've spent so much time. So this would be like the equivalent to a thesis. I got a hundred percent. Congratulations. I can't, I can't even, you know, and I, I, that's such a part of me that's authentic is the learning and being able to grow and really understanding the parts of me that are, you know, intrinsic needs that really help my extrinsic motivation. And I am a professional with ADHD and I've not really leaned into that Um, outside of the past few years. It was a part of me that I always felt a little, not necessarily ashamed of, but I didn't understand it and I didn't want to be judged for it. So I have had a core belief as some, some folks who also have ADHD or are uh, neurodiverse, they know that rejection sensitivity or RSD is a big part of that. And a couple years ago, it was actually a New Year's resolution. I told myself, I'm going to rewrite my core belief that I'm not good enough because I was tired of it controlling everything. You know, you and that's, I think, folks who have imposter syndrome or really struggle, you know, in a new role, I hear all the time, 
I'm a VP and I don't know what I'm doing. Am I qualified? It's like, man, nobody knows what they're doing in the beginning. That's, that's, that's literally the definition of experience. And ability and capability, I think those two things are two entirely different concepts where ability is where you're currently performing and capability is where you could be performing. And we often hold ourselves accountable to where we could be performing without allowing ourselves to acquire the experience. And that breaking, I know, breaking that concept up, I think it allowed me to check myself before I wrecked myself, but I also leaned into the the core parts of me that might have been too uh, achievement driven or, you know, those expectations needed to be level set. But I did a lot of self work uh, that included counseling, uh, things I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to talk about that stuff. Everybody needs help. Yeah. Uh, as an adult being diagnosed with ADHD, it's a little bit interesting. Your whole life kind of feels like a lie overnight and things start to make sense. But l- leaning into those things and understanding those parts of me that mm-hmm. I would not be where I'm at without the gifts that I have. And yeah. I, I really got to know that. So I don't let myself not live authentically. I am myself in everything that I do, good, bad, right, or wrong. Uh, I know I'm not going to be for everybody. Uh, I know that my uh, the way that I look at things is different, mm-hmm. but different messes stuff up. And sometimes you just got to mess it up a little bit because <laughs> when things get disrupted, mm-hmm. that's where the magic happens. Ooh. Oh my yeah. gosh, just Jessica, there's so much to unpack what you said. And 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 I'm my mind is just processing all these nuggets of wisdom that you shared with us. But you know, it all comes down to and just kind of my my reference is just really acknowledging and embracing the awareness of who you are. And that is where you really find your gift, skills, and talents. And then when you find those, you really start learning and, and acknowledging those those gifts, skills, and talents and doing the reps to grow on it. And I love what you talked about ability and capability. I mean, recognizing those two, the differences between those two can really be powerful and Absolutely. authentic. That is just that is just the core of it all, just really embracing who you are and growing that creates so yeah. much more Oh my gosh, that, what a great conversation so far. We just started. Jessica, you also shared nature inspires you. So let us know what that means to you. I know you kind of put a little side note on there, mountain biking. So tell us what nature does and how does my, mountain biking inspire you? Yes. So uh, I've been mountain biking pretty religiously for a few <laughs> years and it actually came after a, a knee injury. I, I think I just probably overdid it. With I've, I'm a pretty active person and I remember uh, not being able to run like I used to or lift the way that I wanted to and was at the gym sitting at the top. I was at LA Fitness so there's like two different tiers up there and I'm like on this bike just mean mugging the people down there like look at you with your good knees just lifting the way that you want and i started to embrace cycling at that point Mm -hmm. and got a cycle bike and then upgraded that bike and i was like i think i can do this in real life and when i would go out and i've always loved nature being in the beach hiking i live in the pacific northwest so i'm like nature heaven but there's something about mountain biking that allowed me to let my ADHD freak flag fly because <laughs> I can go as fast as I want. You have to oh, you have to look at a thousand things at one time without overthinking it. You can do all of the things. And I actually listen to classical music while I mountain bike, which is weird, but like lyrics get in the way of my thought process, but it Ooh. allows me just to think so clearly. I actually, I've been known to like rewrite a keynote speech the night before if I'm mountain biking because my mind is so clear. That actually happened. Uh, I was speaking at Apartmentalize the oh. year that it was virtual for COVID and I wasn't happy with the delivery. I, I wanted it to be more authentic. I rewrote almost the entire thing on my bike the night before and knocked it out of the park. Oh. Hey, it's like, 
I don't know. There's just something about nature that I love, and I love the physical challenge of mountain biking. I like the adrenaline rush. I'm a little bit of an adventure junkie, and I like being able to work hard for something. And it's just, it's so satisfying for me, both psychologically and physiologically. Yeah. And, and what a cool kind of like introduction to mountain bike, biking, because you're at a point where like, okay, I had a little knee issues. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of those people that can run or do the other things on. But what you did was you didn't let the what you can't do drag you down. You're like, hey, I'm going to find what I can do. And then you grew from that. And because you embrace that, what I can do, it grew into something that really benefited you, you know, to clarity of your mind and kind of helping your ADHD because you're, you know, looking at a thousand things and processing it all at the same time as you go through the trails. What an incredible story of really just embracing the authenticity because it still goes mm -hmm. back to really embracing who you are. And now you've got this tool, mountain biking, that just gives you opportunity to really embrace who you are as a person and, and gives you inspiration. This is Definitely. so good. This is good yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's so, really a testament to like that mindset management, right? Like life mm -hmm. doesn't happen to you. It happens because of you. And there are changes that we can make to let the let the challenges and experiences that come mm -hmm. with adversity yeah. build resilience. And that's actually the definition of resilience is going through adversity and making it out on the other side. So mm -hmm. unless we have challenges, and I'm a huge believer in failure, we're we're not going to grow. We we yep. it cannot happen. Yeah. And that's so good. And, I, and I've heard it some other ways where, you know, like if you want to grow a muscle, you've got to embrace resistance, tears of muscles and the muscles rebuild. Yep. The same thing of failure. Hey, you break, but you get back up and you get better. That is so amazing. Yeah. I love, love, love. And you kind of alluded a little bit to your third point, organizational psychology. So this one's pretty neat. And, and congratulations, because you just noted that you've just finished your degree. Just but about... I got, I finished my last big assignment. I so am. Excited. I'm so excited for you. I'm believing it's going to be amazing. So tell us what this means to your organizational. So give us a little brief on what is organizational psychology and how is this inspiring you along the way? Yeah. So organizational psychology, I didn't really know it was a thing until I was starting to get my degree. So I'm getting it, my bachelor's of science in general psychology, and I've got a 4.0 GPA <laughs> and I've done it in about 17 months. So I'm, I know I'm a crazy person, uh, but I, this was a topic that uh, when I, once I learned that it was an actual, like I'll, I'll get my master's degree in IO psychology, which is industrial organizational, but I, everything about it were things that I implicitly loved. Leadership development, the significance and meaning of workplace to people, uh, how the workplace, uh, there's lots of different theories, but like social identity theory says that how we associate with our organizations can impact psychological well-being. We know the impact of workplace stress on our, on our psyche and our families. And I believe that workplaces should be uh, an equal, equitable place where people can thrive. Mm -hmm. And when organizations make sometimes just as few small changes, they can create not only an environment where people are, you know, happy, but you have to have people in a good place if you want to drive any level of organizational success. So yep. there's a direct correlation and causation to how well people are thriving to what your return on investment actually is. And I want to help organizations knock that out of the park. Wow. And it, 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 I, again, just processing, because what a, what a gift to, to have that kind of knowledge and wisdom of understanding there's a why behind all the things that causes the success of a company. And for me, and I'm just just kind of relating it to, to what I do, I always put people before tasks. And if your people are good, your people are taken care of, they're, they're in a good place, those tasks are going to happen and happen well if if you do it in the right order. And I, and I love that you're just like you are full force going after this knowledge that's going to create wisdom that will eventually help so many other people, so many organizations along the way. So kudos to you. That's incredible. 
I can't Thank wait. You. We may have to do a follow up conversation after you get your master's and, you know, all of the things that come from that, because that is truly inspiring that, you know, go get your master's degree and become that person that can help others. So yeah. amazing. Jessica, Absolutely. you are, you are an inspiration. I'm so glad I've got you on the show here today. We are getting close to the end of our time. But before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Yeah, thank you. You know, my personal mantra is integrity always prevails. And it really, I think, encapsulates all of these things from today. You know, one of the things I didn't expect as like in my last role was the all of the places where, you know, I think that in leadership roles, your decision making, it's always called into question. That's just kind of the burden of being a lever, right? Like heavy is the head that wears the crown. But I I can look back at the beginning of my career and where I'm at today and feel confident that me following my integrity, even when it wasn't the popular choice, is the number one reason why I can stand here today in confidence and be proud of every decision I've made. I've left opportunities. I've left people. I've left uh, situations that didn't identify with who I am as a person. And I don't have any regret, guilt, or shame about that. And so that would be like my piece of advice to anyone who might see themselves here is when you are doing the right thing every day, even when nobody is looking, that's how you lay your head down at night is so much more than the title that you wear. Mm -hmm. And I've, I will always lean into that. I will. It's, you can't, you know, it's get character, right? There you go. That's the word character. Yeah. And you get character by being your authentic self, even when nobody yeah. are, is looking. Jessica, what a great conversation with so many nuggets of wisdom. Um, tell us one more time. What is your website for your consulting company? Yes. So it is www.propertymanagementintelligence.com. Guys, we're going to put it in the show notes. Make sure you go check it out. Follow Jessica on LinkedIn, Money Back Guarantee. You will be inspired. So incredible. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today here on the Super Fantastic Exchange. And thank you guys thank you. for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. You have a wonderful day.